at the end of a driveway lined with cypress trees. We are greeted by the home of the Giovanni family, who made traditional wine and cheese. In the year 1884, the former generation of the family constructed this astonishing mansion. Inside we find evidence of great wealth and pleasure that in 1966 they would abandon. All throughout the house there are signs of happiness and history, but in some corners of the house we also discovered a great mystery. Let's roam through the relics of the Giovanni family's past. Let's bring their lives and stories forever to the present and the future. Welcome back everybody to the Bros of DK. I'm Leslie and today I'm going to take you on another adventure throughout a beautiful abandoned house. We are today still on our 2020 road trip and we found the place of the Giovanni family. An 18th century farm that's on a mountaintop in the middle of nowhere. And here they used to produce traditional cheese and wine for the region and the province. But not internationally, they kept it for themselves and for the people around here to enjoy. It's a beautiful place that we're going to take a tour throughout. I'm going to show you all the artifacts that are left in here. And I hope to find out some more history together with you. That's why we explore together. So let's go on this adventure. First off, you can see that this place was not only used as a residential place. This was probably the signage over here because there's a mandatory road to the left. You can drive here. That was probably put up there for trucks that came up, came to pick up some wine or fr uh, fr cheese so they knew where to drive. Over here we had a huge barn where the wine, uh, excuse me, where the cheese was produced. Up there on the mountainside, I'm gonna show you quickly before I go there. There's a huge manor, but next to it there's a, yeah, a barn where they used to produce the wine. And here in front of me, we have the church, the private church for the people that used to live here. And probably also for the workers, because back in the day in Italy, people were very, very, very religious. And uh, they used to pray during their mealtime, after their mealtime, five times a day. And so a private church would come in very handy. It's unfortunately not open. I'm gonna show you. I pushed and I pushed, but not gonna break anything to get in here but you can see I'm gonna put my light through and I hope you can get a glimpse of it let me try on this side okay yes that's better now you can see the private church where the workers and the people that used to live here could pray in and it's not an ordinary church it has some look at that paintwork back at the altar and back there it's something very special, extraordinary, wow. And normally in Italy, they also have very nice ceiling paintings, but I can't seem to, no, there's no ceiling painting in here. Okay, what a wonderful church. I, it's probably not a church, it's more like a ca chapel, but I'm gonna call it a church because it's so, so incredible. And then for the cheese part, I already sneak peeked inside of this one because I don't want to show you a full barn with just barn stuff, but I want to show you the cheese factory itself. And that's gonna be, let me see where it was, I believe in here or the next one. Yeah, over here it was. This was the cheese factory itself. I'm not, a, I don't have much knowledge of uh, cheese manufacturing, but uh, I, from the story that I heard, it was cheese manufacturing, so that's what I want to show you. If anybody has more knowledge about it, maybe he can tell in the comment section to the rest of the people what exactly all these tools were used for. Because you can see these huge racks up here with these beams, these wooden sticks, and it would probably hang from something from there. Might it be cheese? I don't know, but uh, that could be the possibility. See, this was a huge kitchen area for production. And uh, indeed, again, 
lots and lots of these racks, probably to produce cheese. Down here there's also a chimney. It's for wine storage as well. Also have a look at this old school heater. Shafash, central heating. This was what they used to heat up this place for the workers. So it was nice and toasty for them. Okay, I think it's now time to head up there to the big manor where the people lived and where the wine was produced. Let me go with you. So we have to go up this mountainside here. But to the sides of it, there is also a house left behind. And maybe this was also a family house of some sort, but I already checked it. It's completely closed. Unfortunately, we can't check that out. But then we need to go up this mountain to the house itself. Okay, this is pretty steep. <laughs> But uh, that's what the adventure is all about. I'm gonna show you that literally this place is in the middle of nowhere. We had to drive like through over sandy roads and for about 10 kilometers to get here. Look at this, the mountainside behind me. And there you can see that there's nothing here around it. Pretty hefty. Some cacti down there. And this behind me is the manor itself. Over here in the middle of it, you can see a courtyard with some palm trees in it. And this leads to this side, that's the manor. But on this side, this completely overgrown place, that used to be the wine production hall. And it hasn't been used for 60 years, so it's completely crumbling apart. And nature, nature is literally starting to take it, take it over. The former odors probably kept it a little bit in shape, but now after its complete abandonment, the place is completely falling apart. There's a little sign on here in Italian that says Attenzione pericolo, that means uh, collapsing of dangerous, dangerous for collapse. Something like that. My Italian is not great. Wow. I'm now entering into the wine production hall. And you can see immediately there's a huge wine press here. Actually not that huge. I've seen bigger ones in Portugal and Italy and, and France. But they produce local, local wine on a small quantity. And I wanted to keep it very traditional. So uh, this, that's why this wine is not that huge actually. And above me, the whole roof has gone, completely fallen. We also have a wine barrel back there in the room. Okay, and now it's time to take you guys into the manor itself and show you the lives of Giovanni and the people that lived after them. Let's go. Let's now head into the manor itself and show you where the Giovanni family used to live. The number six of the street. Which street? <laughs> big door, the big keyhole as well, leading into the entrance hall of the place. Wow, let's come in. This looks pretty empty at first, but the first thing I notice is a candle up here instead of a lamp. This looks like lots of accountancy from back in the day. I'm not gonna go through there because there are probably lots of addresses on there, but these downstairs floors seem pretty empty. I have seen some pictures from the place and I know that upstairs is the best part. The first thing we see over here is already some pictures of some women that might have lived here. I think what we see over here is the outside of this place. And here they are having dinner together. Italian hat left behind. More paperwork down here. 
very interesting. I always love to find these things in abandoned places, pictures and dates, and this tells you about the people. Before, I'm gonna go upstairs later, but first I wanna show you more of the downstairs. But there's also a stair lift leading upstairs. So it lets me to think that the person that last lived here was very old and they probably passed away after some time, maybe in 2014 when the building was last used. Let's push open this doorway. And this leads us into a little storage area. It also goes to the basement. Wow. We have some jams left behind. And these jams are from 1989. And some beans down here as well. And some of that locally beautifully produced wine from the Giovanni family. Probably the last bottles that they ever produced. There's also a bottle of champagne left here. And this leads us further into a dark and clammy basement where we can find more history of the Geo family family. Oh, it seems to have been locked up. But up here, there are even more of these wine bottles of the family. And they're all still full. I would love to taste them, but I think they are not good anymore. That's so interesting. I also have a huge barrel here. That's empty. Why is this closed up? What's behind there? Just gonna have a quick peek. Oh, you can see. Huge wine barrels behind there. Can I show you this? Oh yeah, now you can see. There's a huge wine barrel. There are more, I can see more in the corner of my eye. That's something interesting. Why I can't go into this basement? Maybe there is another entrance into that basement. But I will have to figure that out later because that's probably the side I saw another door here. Can I open this one as well? Ah. Okay. What's this room that I just have stepped into? More wine vials. This side here. This looks a little bit like a production room for the wine factory, a desk. Oh my God, these are storage areas for wine. Oh, that's so interesting. They are very, very big. They used to produce more wine than I even thought. I thought they would produce like maybe a few hundred bottles a year. They actually produce thousands and thousands of bottles of wine. We got some more storage tanks and barrels back here in this barn. Wow, that's so interesting. This really gives you a sense of the scale that these people used to produce wine at. And I think I just saw a way into the basement that we couldn't explore just because that was blocked. I think that's down here. I think this stairway is gonna lead us into that basement. That's enormous. Here are the barrels that we just saw. Those two barrels from this side. Wow, this place is enormous. I love to wander through these old school basements with these archer styles and they're just so interesting. 
and I hold so much history of these places. Because this is how these people lived. This is how they made their money. We got a few more battles down here. But these are actually not that big. Maybe for the special ones. Wonderful. Let's head up the stairway now and see what's left behind upstairs. I'm really excited for that because that's where the Giovanni family used to live. I'm gonna leave these two for later, but first let's head through this door. Push it open. Oh, we're immediately greeted by a huge hallway leading to the bedrooms up there, I believe. But up here we got some beautiful Italian ceilings. That's what makes these Italian homes so different and special from all the other places that I film around the world. The ceilings are always mesmerizing. I think this also used to be a bedroom because there's like this steel frame for a bed in here and an upholstery chair next to it. And they had also these wall encavements and in there they would have like little religious statues like a Maria and stuff like that but they are taken out right now my friend is taking some pictures down there but let us head to the left here into this room first wow what a ceiling And then these curtains here at the end of it. So amazing. And I think you already noticed, but <laughs> I just saw this piano in the corner of my eye when I entered this room. <laughs> Some flowers next to it. And then we have this piano. Kriegelstein and Corporation. That's probably a German brand or an Austrian brand because in Austria they also speak German. Yeah, Austrian, but it blue is, it's very similar to German. We'll see it over here. Theresa it says on there. That's the piano seat. And then we've got all these little artifacts left up here. Oh, look at this woman. That's on the property itself here. And she used to live here. That might have been this woman in her former days. And it might also have been the last resident of this place. Wow. Look at this. This is a Christmas ball. From 2008 it says on there. 2009 just before it got abandoned. Another children's pictures up, a picture up here. And this one is from 1938. Wonderful. You guys still think it plays? Let's see. Oh, the keys are all, seem to all be broken. Damn. And to this side of the room, got this little golden fireplace with an upholstery. I think it's a heat holder or something like that. Completely upholstery. I don't know the exact name for this device or this piece of furniture that's in front of the fireplace. So let me know in the comment section below. And behind it we have this beautiful fireplace with still the last ashes of these people in there. Ah, and this is the balcony outside, and a woman is standing on there. Wow, chimney leading up. And up there, we got some paintings of a woman. And on this side as well. Room over here. It's pretty empty. They threw a lot of chairs in here little coat hanger with all the bags of the people here 
It looks like a fox tail. Wow. Oh, this man, an old school farm probably, outside of the mansion. This is the front door that we entered this place into back in the day. More pictures of the people. An old school brush broom that I made from straw. Here's a woman in Cairo, Egypt. The same man going back. Maybe the founder of this place, the founder of the wine and cheese factory that used to be, used to be here. Okay. I just heard from my friend I'm gonna be amazed by the room here on the left. Let's head in there. Oh my God. Just have a look at the room that I just have entered into. This must be literally the most beautiful bedroom that I've ever seen. It's so complete, so beautiful and so historical. Completely with Italian ceilings, the design on them, a chandelier hanging in the middle of it, the heaven bed presenting the room in the middle of it, still made after all those years. First off, have a look at this curtain that's hanging here. All the flower design on it. Then we have the bed itself. And like I always say, you can distinguish Italian beds because on the crown of the bed, they mostly have designs. And this one is no exception. A woman kissing little pot the blanket still on there there's also a design at the front here of a garden a lush garden and to the side of the bed we got some upholstery chairs in the corner of the room they look really nice some flowers These are all dead, but these flowers, they hold up pretty well. You can see them in lots of abandoned places, and this one is no exception. This vanity is also very unique. It fits perfectly with the furniture in this room. That's probably why they chose it and why they made it like this. <laughs> Italians cover almost always everything with curtains, like these little curtains. There we have another one over here. The sheep. And on this side of the bed, we have a nightstand with a statue and a lamp. Makes for a really nice setup. Maria as well in this room. Two more of these chairs. And the chest. Even the chest in this room fits with the rest of the furniture. This boy, he has a serious face. I wonder if he was an inhabitant of this house. Wonderful, just wonderful. Let's wander further through this house. I think behind me here, through this door, is the bathroom. Yes, it is. And everything is still left in this bathroom. 
from the brushes and the combs to the medicine and the cabinets, the soap and the bath. Wow. And over on this side, all that toothbrushes and combs are all left behind. They got pretty old. You can see there's lots and lots of medicine in this place, bandages and stuff like that. Completely filled and left behind. This one's completely empty, except for all the hats that are in here. And then let's have a look at that last room on this side of the house. It's also completely empty, except for the very, very beautiful ceiling that's in here with the angels. We have a few more rooms up here that we need to film. This is one of them. A little bit less fancy bedroom, but uh, probably also holds some valuable history that adds onto the story. Got some bags and clothes from the former people left here behind and forgotten. books but they probably reveal a location so I'm not gonna film them and then we have this coat hanger up here a Pearl Street coat hanger beautifully a Pearl Street and in the middle of it there's a mirror it's a nice piece of furniture really love the flowers on it as well a picture of a child at the back here some religious text underneath it and we have this steel bed, but you can immediately see that it's Italian with the shapes on it at the end over there as well. Wow. A vanity with a mirror in between. Oh, there are some pack of cigarettes. They're still full. And they look like, no, they don't look like modern, modern cigarettes. I thought they were from some explorers or some people that have been in here, but they are from the people that once lived here. These are the last cigarettes. To the side of the room, we also have another closet. And this seems to be pretty empty, so I'm not gonna go further into that. And a few bags of the women of this place. And to this side, there are even more rooms. Well, let's have a look at them white ceiling in this one the other ones were way more fancy some curtains back there wow i just noticed look at these tennis rackets they are very very interesting let's open this up some books in here. And another broken mirror for good luck. I also really adore these curtains that are hanging up here. They have a very nice design on them. Let's see in this side of the house. Oh, another bedroom. And this one does have a nice ceiling. A blue ceiling with flowers made into it. And then from the ceiling hangs a little, little lamp. I wanted to say a chandelier, but it's not. And this place has been studded. So it's falling into disrepair and decay over the time that nature is taking it over. It only has been abandoned for six years. Imagine that. That's how, how fast your memories are gone and are taken back over by Earth itself. Six years. That's nothing. I 
I always like to imagine what happens when we die. And you see it when you go through these places. Your memories are just lost. Only by the people that really know you. And after about a hundred years, everything you ever did in life doesn't matter anymore. Everything you ever painted or drew, or the newspapers you read, or the people you talk to, it's all gone. And that's why I like to enjoy my life and not care about things too much. Don't worry about things too much. Because you can see from these abandoned places, it will all be gone after a certain point. The clothes of the people, all left in here. You can see these are women's clothes. Some animal fur, beautiful jackets. A vanity with a tilting mirror. It's a really, really nice piece. You can tilt on each and every direction. And a little closet. What's this over here? This little box. Wow. We have a picture of a child and a beautiful dress. And this woman as well. Mmm. You can see something behind here. Two children walking their dogs in 1900. 37. Wonderful. Now we have another picture of this man. Very Italian looking with the mustache. Over here on the cabinet, we got a picture of a farmer with his two cows working the fields, probably making the grapes for the locally produced wine. Wow. Lots of books left up here as well. And we got a Singer sewing machine to the side. A very, very common, typical sewing machine that you see in most abandoned places. But this has some neat design on it. The Singer Manufacturing Corporation, it says on there. There's another one to this side. There's always a little engraving of the brand, the footrest. They mostly don't function. Oh, this one does. Still functions. <laughs> and then over here, I think we got the kitchen with the table and the big egg oven with the exhauster to make the pizzas, the pizza and pasta. Of course, because we're in Italy. That's the most common dish I have eaten already like six, seven times pizza on my road trip now. But you never get tired of it, of course. Let's see what's in here. Some bed linen to dress up the beds. The smell that comes from these closets is just so old school. Little bag with seasoning it says on there. Then we got two more pictures. Look at these. Wow, they are old school. And over here, the dishes and the clothes were washed. Hand washing the clothes and the dishes happened in this place. And in that big room, there's also a little hidden doorway left behind. You can see there's a big key in here and this probably leads up to the attic yeah have a look at the mechanism to open and close this door that's so old school wow just a door seeing that let's head up here because it looks very narrow and small Oh, it's not a door. That leads to another stairway. Let's head up here then. 
smells like wine up here. Oh, even up here, there are wine bottles left behind. Wow, they smell really strongly. Literally, really strongly. Just give it a little bit more light. You can see better. They are probably still full. Yeah, they don't seem full, but wow. Let's go a little bit further on that on this attic, because that's really interesting. Bed frames behind there. Some more furnishings. <laughs> These are old school ball tubs. And this over here, that's a sink. I really adore this ball tub over here. Show it to you from the side. That's amazing to see. Look on this side. It's empty. And behind here. It's also completely empty. I just took out that bathtub to let you see what it looks like. Wow. I really adore things like this. <laughs> All these chairs actually sit pretty nicely and are comfortable. Oh, I didn't expect that. What a room, what a place, what a story. Thank you for the Giovanni family that lived here. And thank you for the house and thank you for their lives. I hope they're doing, they're doing well in heaven up there. And uh, we covered some history for them and gave them a place on this YouTube channel forever. I wanna thank you all for watching this week's video. Like down there if you liked the video, subscribe to the channel and share it with all your friends that also might be interested in a video like this. And also down there in the description, because we are just students, there is a link to Patreon. They can you help us out and support this channel with a little donation. With that all being said, I want to thank you all. And I will see you next week in another epic adventure. Bye bye. I love you very much.